from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father John O'Brien. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from Phyllis and Manuel da Costa from Edmonton. This Mass is offered on the occasion of their 54th anniversary. In thanksgiving for their family and friends and for the repose of souls of those who have passed away. On behalf of everyone gathered for this sacred celebration, we thank Phyllis and Manuel for this gift, and we wish them both a very happy wedding anniversary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends in Christ, today we are celebrating the feast day of St. John de Brebeuf, St. Isaac Jogues, and their companions, martyrs and missionaries to Canada, and a kind of feast day for the whole nation. Preparing ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who chose to manifest the blessed hope of your eternal kingdom by the toil of Saints John de Brebeuf, Isaac Jogues, and their companions, and by the shedding of their blood, graciously grant that through their intercession, the faith of Christians may be strengthened day by day. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. In my vision, I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands, the multitude cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then the elders said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple and the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. 
for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when our enemies attacked us, then they would have swallowed us up alive. When their anger was kindled against us, those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. Then the flood would have swept us away, the torrent would have gone over us, then over us would have gone the raging waters. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We have this treasure in clay vessels so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way but not crushed, perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Go and teach all people my gospel. I am with you always until the end of the world. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to all his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, 
and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. What does it profit them if they gain the whole world, but lose or forfeit themselves? Those who are ashamed of me and my words, of them the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends in Christ, in the first reading today, we heard about John's vision in Revelation of a multitude of people coming from all tribes and nations, standing before the throne of the Lamb, worshiping and praising God. These men and women, clothed in white, we are told, are those that have been through a great ordeal, and their robes, paradoxically, have been made white by the blood of the Lamb. This vision of this great assembly of martyrs down through the ages sees them praising God day and night because they love him. They hunger and thirst no more, for God has wiped away every tear from their eyes. What a beautiful vision this is for us as well. While we might not be martyrs in the same sense, who among us has not experienced tears and anguish from trying to live the gospel faithfully? Perhaps you have felt the sting of rejection from within your own family. Perhaps members of the church itself have wounded you. Perhaps you have been ridiculed at work or at school for your faith. Perhaps it's simply the news media that causes you to be discouraged about, about the world. The reading today reminds us that the Lamb of God is the final victor and will be the springs of the waters of life for both now and for eternity. God cannot be outdone in consolation, in power, and in joy. In the second reading, St. Paul echoes that theme, testifying that even though he's been afflicted in every way, he has not been crushed. In fact, he says, it is through his sufferings that the life of Jesus has become visible. This too should be a source of inspiration for us all, for it implies that for the believer, not only does death have no ultimate sway over us, but our very sufferings can be occasions that witness to hope and inspire to faith and conduce to love. In other words, our joys and our sorrows can make valid contributions to the great economy of grace. They're not meaningless, but have a positive power for the salvation of the world. These readings today illustrate perfectly for us what St. John de Brebeuf and the seven other Jesuit martyr missionary saints to Canada represented by their lives and by their deaths. They were like the grains of wheat in the gospel. They fell to the earth and they died. And in dying, they bore much fruit. Before I was a Jesuit, I was a teacher and I took my class one day to Martyr Shrine in Midland, Ontario. And although I was a practicing Catholic, I was not yet in my vocation. And I was probably delaying my discernment of God's will in my life. And at one point in the day, uh, we were hearing the stories of the lives of the eight missionary martyrs, and I found myself choking up, weeping, something that was very unusual for me at the time. What struck me about their lives was not the hardships the m missionaries endured, but the why behind the choice. Most of them left behind lives of relative comfort in France to embrace the relentless mosquitoes the eye-burning smoke of the longhouses, the never-ending frigid winters, the relentless threat of drowning, of starvation, and of course, even torture and death. The question for me that day, and for us too, dear friends, is why did they do what they did? 
Now, the answer is found all over the Jesuit relations, those letters that they left 400 years ago. They testify that they were filled with the love of God. I knew this in my head. I realized, though, that God's love had to be experienced as something powerful. If knowing a love like this was possible in this life, I knew I had to have it. So I started my vocational discernment, and to my surprise, God led me to the Society of Jesus, the same order as the martyrs. In his writings, Brebeuf recounts how when things seemed futile, discouraging, and difficult, they would take a day off and go into the wilderness and spend that day in fellowship, in prayer, and in the praises of the Lord. And then he said it would seem like none of the hardships mattered. Their hearts were full. And although their mission ended 10 short years after with the genocidal invasion of the Iroquois nation, the great dispersal of the Huron and Orwendat survivors brought the faith to many new parts of the continent, eventually even to the Iroquois, who produced that great fruit, St. Kateri Tekakwitha. Unless a grain falls to the earth and dies, it remains a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Dear friends, what are the ways God is calling you to fall to the earth and die today so that you may bear much fruit? Let us ask the Lord that praying through the intercession of the martyrs, we too may share in that great love of God that consumes us and inspires heroic acts, both visible and invisible, large and small, and that will bring you one day to that great company of saints that worships him day and night. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. As we venerate the passion of your martyrs, Saints John and Isaac and their companions, grant that through this sacrifice, O Lord, we may proclaim worthily the death of your only begotten Son, from which all martyrdom draws its strength through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs, John and Isaac and companions, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power. 
and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness. Through Christ our Lord, and so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saints John de Brebeuf, Isaac Jogue, and their companions, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the body and blood of Christ, keep us safe for eternal life. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by the example of Saints John and Isaac and their companions, we may be ever united in heart to the charity and suffering of your Son and enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.